Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahoo and Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for spending time with us. For a lot of you, this will actually be on our other channel. Um, I guess not a lot of you, but some of you, the people that we truly care about the most, um, is you guys. And, you know, we've had a little bit of drama over the last couple of days, starting in on Shabbat. A little bit, actually it was on Friday. And um, it, was Friday evening. it was Friday evening when they started this. And... Um, a lot of the question they that people have been asking is is did this go down the Matthew 18 way where you basically make sure your ducks are in a row, you take witnesses, you take all of this stuff and go that way. And we were emailed on Friday afternoon by three separate emails. And in one of the emails, the the gal and the the, the I'll, I'll just tell you straight up. Her name is Deborah Allen. And that is, there, there is no team there. There is no other stuff. They are a kind of a two-man show, even though they say they have a huge team. Um, they, they do not. And so what Nicole and I did yesterday is we went off and we started researching this group. And what we found is we found at least five eyewitness accounts of people that have worked within the hallelujah scriptures that let us know exactly how they function, how they operate and what their system is all about. And I'll tell you, number one is the front page of their site where it says they've never been a 501 C three. That is a complete lie. They were a 501 C three and I will be producing evidence for this and I will be putting this stuff out. So if we want to, look for tossing stones or tossing any of this stuff. We, we were attacked and our creator knows exactly what boss clan is going to do when we get poked. And you know, our, one of the, the biggest things for us is to distribute the word of Yah, whether or not we're sitting here reading with you guys as families or whether or not we are, you know, just whatever teachings that we have out there, that is our goal of this house is to get the word of Yah out to everybody. And I guess, this was 20 years in the making because it appears that the, the Hallelujah Grifters, they ended up with a, an awesome version of this scriptures. And they, um, they stole this from the ISR. And I am actually getting in contact with all of these people, including the guy from the ISR, who he had to fight them for years because they did, he did copyright strikes against them like 10 years ago because they had stolen the ISR. It was almost identical to it. And so it doesn't matter. What matters is that it is the very best translation that we have in English right now. And it is what needs to be distributed across the world. And the Hallelujah Grifter team has hold on to this word. And I didn't know how, how hard they held on to this word. So as they are attacking us, they, it is, it's all Deborah Allen, right? There's, it's a really a one woman show that is running this and has been running this for years. And she is a thug. They are a thug. They have threatened people. They've called CPS on people. They are very evil people. And they have held this word of Yah as hostage. Now, I didn't know anything about this. I thought that I've been preaching them for years. I've been saying, hey, everybody go buy a Hallelujah Scriptures. And then when we scanned the book to try to give this out, and all of a sudden, everybody came after us and they struck our channels and they threatened us. And um, then they get this Babrak Khan and his family in the comments telling us how they're OG gangsters, legal gangsters. Um, Yah has put the perfect people to the battle to where they need to go. And we are, we will never ever stop this fight. We will never ever hide the word of Yah, but we will hide our server. And we will hide our domain name. We will hide all of this. And if they want to chase the server and want to chase the domain name, this is perfect. My entire life has been in the IT industry. That's what we do is things of this nature. And so if there is a perfect group to unhinge this, you've seen it. Now, this is where it gets very distressing is because we know that they do have an operation that has changed lives, right? That is the rub. They do sell books and they sell the very best version of scriptures that are out there, in my honest opinion, but they don't give it away for free. 
All of this stuff on their website about them giving it away for free, it is very, very rare if somebody would qualify for a free version of it. So they, they were at one point a 501c3. And when we expose this, or actually just, I just, it's not even exposing, it's simply reading out what the people have already put out there as witness statements, you guys are going to be shocked. You will be shocked at what people who are involved in the word of Yah are capable of doing and how they have hijacked this version and have made a living off of it for 20 years. Not just a living, but they have made a lot and they've done it on the backs of the people of Yah. And I know that's a lot to take in and I know a lot of people will be angry with this, but guys, we're not here for a popularity contest. I am here for a to serve Yah. We are here to serve him. There has never been a, a command ever that says to hide the word of Yah. We're, we're told opposite. We're told to write it on our hearts, our doorsteps, our front posts, our eyelets, our head, everywhere. It is what we are. It's a Shema, right? Hear, O Yisrael. That is what we are doing, and we will not stop. Even if my heart stops, which I don't have a very good heart anymore. My heart is, I have really high blood pressure, and it's been hurting, especially lately through this. Even when my heart stops, I've requested my family never let this version of the scriptures go offline. So as long as they have the capabilities of leaving this on there, guys, it is the very best PDF version of the scriptures that you'll ever have. That being said, even though it is the hallelujah grifters, they still produce scriptures in hardbound books that are absolutely awesome. The best thing. So if you can get a hard copy of the Hallelujah Scriptures while these guys are still in business. I don't know how long they will be in business because this is they I don't believe I you know I don't I don't honestly know in today's world. Back in the day, they were not doing what they said, and I do not believe they are still doing what they say. And I will find all the evidence. I will produce that for the people and people can use it for what they want. But I'm telling you, the evidence is grim. So I will leave it at that and I will say thank you guys very, very much to our family out there. I had no idea how much love and how much support that we have we had until we said our final goodbyes in our other two channels. And um, I, I just, I got to say, I love you all. And um, you guys are all family to us. You've always been family to us. When I say pull up a chair next to our table... I truly mean it, and if we could see the amount of people here, I, I would I would be happy. Even if there's five people here, and there's one person here, I'm happy, and you guys are all our family. So with that, um, gentlemen, how you guys doing? Good, good. good. Anyone anyone shocked at the information you guys were um, you received yesterday? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit. Very shocked. Yeah, very I'm shocked. Amazed what the people of Yah or people that claim to be the people of Yah can do. Yeah, and it's it's very interesting that somebody ends up with the best word of Yah, and they they sell it for shekels, right? It's, it's all about the shekels. It's all about the, the almighty dollar. And so that is very evil. Um, I, 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 I guess Yah is going to have to judge all of me. He's going to judge me. I'm the one that's doing this, not my family. Um, I am the one that is, is completely doing this. Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't do the calendar because I don't even have a calendar. Because I, I went off on that thing. But anyone have a calendar? Nicole, can you find your calendar real quick? Like it's the twelfth day. Is it the twelfth day? I don't know. Let's do this. Um, still kind of, uh, it's still kind of dramatic here, but um, I, I'm sure you guys understand. Okay, what's it, Nicole? Twelfth day. Twelfth day. Second day of the month. Second day of the month. Eighth month. Eighth month. Okay, and what day is it on the Gregorian? It is it's the seventh. A, it's a moon day, isn't it? Yeah. Monday. Okay. Uh, All right. Yes, the day that everyone goes back to work. Yeah, everyone is going back to work today. Um, it's and that should be yesterday. It should have been yesterday. Absolutely. Okay, well, here we go. Mark 6, you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. Kate is, I'm reading out of, I don't even know, I'm reading out of this Yah's scriptures at the bottom. We're reading out of the NIV on the right, the King on the left. Cade has the Hebrew Roots Bible. Hebrew Roots Bible. Jaden is reading out of the Sefer. Nicole is reading out of the Amplified. So right here we have one, two, three, four, five, six different versions that we are reading this out of. And we will discuss. Okay, let's go, guys. And he went away from there and came to his own country. And his Talmudian followed him. And Shabbat having come, he began to teach in the congregation. And many who heard were astonished, saying, Where did he get all this? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, 
that such miracles are done through his hands. Now, to us, this may be kind of um, repetitive because we have already gone through Matthew and a lot of these are the exact same. But we have our Messiah teaching on a Shabbat. What does that tell you, Eli? They should be keeping Shabbat. Well, it, what, does it, what does it tell you, Cade? It tells that they were, they were following Shabbat, that it was not done away with. It, the reason people don't think this so common, why they think it's done away with, is because back then when they say siege on the Shabbat, that was normal. Everyone kept Shabbat. Well, everyone yeah. in the house of Israel, even if they were Jews, they were still doing something toward the degree of Shabbat. Yep. So it was a very common thing to have the word Shabbat, to have Shabbat even in a sentence. Yeah, and so this will go to show you that our Messiah, Yahushua, kept the Shabbat. He kept the laws, statutes, and commands of his dad. If he did not, he would not have been a perfect lamb sacrifice for us. He would have broken the Torah. So if he didn't keep Shabbat, he would have broken the Torah, and thus his sacrifice would not have been unblemished. He would have been a blemished lamb. Okay. That's uh, three. three. Is this not the carpenter, the bin of Miriam? And the bin is, what is bin for you guys? Son. Son, right? The bin, bin of Miriam, the brother of Yaakov and Yosef and Yahuda and Shimon are not his sisters here with us. And they stumbled in him. And Yahushua said to them, a nabi is unappreciated except in his own country and among his own relatives and in his own house. What does that mean exactly, guys? What are we talking about with this? Well, we see that all the prophets, and they all went and preached to Israel. When Israel turned away, they, the prophets would go to preach to their own people, and they'd all end up dying for it. They would all end up killed for what they had said. They said, hey, Yah says it's time to turn back to him. You guys have been in sin long enough. How about you guys come back? And they would get angry, and they would kill every single one of the prophets. Yeah, and so, yeah, they're unappreciated in your own country. Okay, five. And he was unable to do any miracle there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick ones and healed them. Why? Because they were so angry that he was he 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 was gonna get there's gonna be an uproar he was gonna get stoned right then and there if he started doing things because they they hate him. And there yeah. was no belief. In him. No belief, yeah. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he was going around among the villages teaching, and he called the twelve near and began and sent and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over unclean spirits. Now this is something that is um, this is a big event. This is a big event, right? So they've been with Messiah Yahushua for a while, you know, because we're here in the second account. They had to be, but he's sending them out as what? As healers, as Messengers, teachers. yeah. And he gave them power over unclean spirits. So that tells us there's a lot of unclean spirits, right? There's a tremendous amount. It does not take a lot to um, become demon-possessed. So everyone should understand that. This is why we got to keep our... Hearts cling. We got to keep our bodies clean. We can't, you, you know, alcohol is one of those things that is, is a, it's a gateway. It's one of those things. There's a lot of gateways in that you can let your guard down, that you can get demon possessed and you just, you got to fight through these things. And it's, it's, it's all about prayer and fasting. Okay. And he instructed them to take not for the journey, except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to wear two undergarments. Okay, um, you guys probably don't know what a money belt is. Do you guys know what a money belt is? It's like this little, it's like it's a little sack they put on the Could side. Could be a fanny pack. It's like this little, this little bag they put on the side of their thing where they hold their coins back in the day. It might, yeah, it might be like that. Um, they do actually have like it's money like, belts. It's kind of like a wallet or like, I guess a purse almost, more like a, maybe like a purse, but it's more like a wallet. I think you'd stick on the side of your belt and it'd be a little bag you open up and you have all your coins in. Yeah, I don't know what year pockets were invented, but I think that was their, you know, I, I don't think they had pockets back in their, their um, I don't even know what those things are called, like, like mumus or something, or like the, 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 robes. the robes, yeah, robes that they used to wear. Okay, all right, so here we go. And he said to them, wherever you enter into a house, stay there until you leave that place. And any place that does not receive you or listen to you, when you leave there, shake off the dust under your feet as a witness against them. See, he never once said, take no, he never said, take money from these people. He's like, teach the word, and you're, y'all's going to provide for you. You're going to stay with these people. You're not going to take extra pairs of clothes. Y'all's going to provide for you. He never yeah. said, go extort the people or like show miracles and say, all right, 
Round of Grab the money. Pass the money yeah. table. Yeah. All right, let's give some donations for our healers over here. We, we've never heard where the word of Yah has been charged for unless we're dealing with here's something, something evil. Here's something even more uh, interesting is in the day, in the book of Acts when uh, Simon the Magician wanted to have the Holy Spirit. He's like, I'll pay you out of the ministry. He goes, he goes, this stuff's not earned by money. You can't earn the Holy Spirit. He goes, you need to go repent and get your life under order, then come back and we will teach you these things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so... Um, so it's nothing is... By, and there is no word under money. You can't be saved by money. The salve, Yah's, Yah's not here for money. Money yeah. is a man-made thing. It's just a material item that people worry about. And if you're worrying about it, you're taking your eyes off Yah. And if you're sitting there looking for money over Yah, you're not doing his will. You are not doing his works. He's going to provide, right? He's going to provide for every one of his people. He, he brought, he'll bring meat through ravens if he needs to bring you meat through ravens for your food if you are doing the will of Yah. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's what I've said for the last couple of days. Yah doesn't need me. He doesn't need boss clan. He doesn't need anything like this. He doesn't need the hallelujah grifters either. His word will go forth however it is he wants it to go forth. And his will is, is the only thing that should matter to us. And we have to be in his will. Okay, let's continue on. In any place that does not receive you or listen to you, when you leave there, shake off the dust under your feet as a witness against them. Truly I say to you, it shall be more bearable for Saddam and Amora in the day of judgment than for that city. And he went out and proclaimed the purpose to repent. And they were casting out many demons and they were anointing with oil many who were sick and they were healing them. Okay, so here's something interesting, right? So anointing with many with oil and they were cast out many demons, right? So we, we know that they ran into a ton of demons. Um, what do you make of the anointing oil? It, like where it says we're sick. Um, that's interesting, right? What do you have, Nicole? I think it's like essential oils. Essential like the, oils? Like the myrrh and the frankincense and that type of stuff. Yeah, that might be because we, we have essential oils that um, there's like one for like if you have headaches or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, what is that stuff called? There's tea tree oil. Tea tree oil. Peppermint. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of different oils that you use for many different things. Like rosemary helps your brain, helps like the memory. Mm-hmm. Many different things. Yeah, so there, there's a ton of them. So that, that could be very, you know, I don't know so much as if it was like a a vat of olive oil or something. Um, but probably, yeah, what they were, they probably had spices and things of that nature. I don't know. So maybe our brother Glenn can tell us on that. He has it seems to have like a lot more info than we do on this stuff. Okay, and they were healing them. And sovereign Herodias heard, for his name had become well known. And he said, Yochanan, the immerser, has been raised from the dead. And because of this, these powers are at work in him. So, who is Sovereign Herodias? That's Herod. Herod. Okay. And he's the dude that beheaded him when he was in a kind of a drunken state, right? Yep. So, now he realizes that there's something different with this guy. And um, I, bet he, I bet he didn't sleep real well when he, figured, when he thought that, that Yochanan was raised from the dead. Um, he didn't, probably didn't sleep after that at all. Yeah, that probably didn't do, go so well. His wife was probably all crazy as well, even crazier than she was before. All right, 15. Others said he is Eliyahu. Who's Eliyahu? Oh, I like okay, and others said he is a Nabi, like one of the Nebium. But when Herodias heard, he said, this, is, this one is Yochanan, whom I have beheaded. He has been raised from the dead. For Herodias himself had sent and seized Yochanan and bound him in prison because of Herodias, his wife, his brother Philippus' wife, because he had married her. For Yochanan had said to Herodias, it is not right for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias held a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable. For Herodias feared Yochanan, knowing that he was, a, he was a righteous and Kodesh man, and he protected him. And when he heard him, he was much perplexed, yet heard him gladly. And a suitable day came when Herodias, on his birthday, gave a feast for his great men and the high officers and the chief men of Galo. And when the daughter of Herodias herself came in and danced and pleased Herodias and those who sat with him, the sovereign said to the girl, ask me whatever you want and I shall give it to you. Now, this account right here, this is the number one, this is liquor and this is women, right? So this, these two things right here, um, number one, this man was married but yet he was lusting after his niece. It, it was, it would be his niece. Yeah. It would have been his niece. 
And so, you, you know, that's a Torah command. You're, we're not to, you know, we should not be doing things of this nature. I mean, and he married, oh, the wife. And why, why couldn't she marry this guy? I think he was, art, I think her brother was still involved. He was still alive. So I think it was like a, kind of like a cheating moment, like an adulterous moment where John the Baptist was like, know. don't, you can't, it's not right for you to have her. Or I think he just stole his brother's wife and it's like, he didn't die. He just took his brother's wife. Or, huh. or it could have been that he did die, but she had kids, so he shouldn't have had his brother's wife. Well, if he died, he could still have. Well, it would, I guess it'd be the brother's kids. wife, right? If she had, that would be it, right? Okay, you're right. And that, I, I think it was more of like a adulterous thing. I think her is it, well, still we, alive, it's either right? one or two things. One, it's adulterous, or two, it is that the dude died, and you're not supposed to take your brother's wife um, if, she has kids. if she has kids. So um, either way, that was very wrong, and Yochanan was was correct. Okay, 23. And he swore to her, whatever you ask me, I shall give you up to half of my reign. Yeah, this guy's totally liquored up. And she went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of Yochanan, the immerser. And coming in immediately with haste to the sovereign, she asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of Yochanan, the immerser, on a dish. And the sovereign, becoming deeply grieved because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, did not want to refuse her. And the sovereign straightway sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison and brought his head on a dish and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. And when his Talmudian heard of it, they came and took away his dead body and laid it in a tomb. And the emissaries gathered to Yahushua and reported to him all, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a little. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. And they went away to a lonely place in a boat, in the boat by themselves. But they saw them going, and many recognized him and ran there on foot from all the cities and came before them and came together to him. And having gone out, Yahushua saw a large crowd and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep, having not, have, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them much. And as the hour grew late, his Talmudian came to him and said, This is a lonely place, and now the hour is late. Send them away so that they go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, since they have not to eat. But he answering said to them, You give them to eat. And they said to him, Should we go and buy 200 silver pieces worth of bread and give them to eat? Then he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. And he ordered them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. And they sat down in groups in hundreds and fifties. So I find this interesting, right? Fifties and hundreds, right? What, 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 what do we know about fifties and hundreds? That's how they kind of left Egypt. <laughs> yeah, it's also, what, what, is, what, is a 50, what is a 50th year for us? Jubilee. It's a jubilee, right? So our timelines are sevens and fifties. And so, and also Yah has, you know, military ways of doing his people and they, they all left Ramses like you said at 50s okay 41 and taking the five loaves and the two fish looking up to the Shimaim, he broke and broke the loaves and gave them to his Talmudian to put before them and the two fish he divided among them all and all ate and were satisfied and they picked up 12 baskets filled with pieces also from the fish now those who ate the loaves were about 5,000 men and immediately he made his Talmudian enter into the boat and to go before him to the other side, to Bet Zaida, while he was dismissing the crowd. And having sent them away, he went away to the mountain to pray. Okay. Um, he just went away to a mountain to pray. What do we make of this? Uh, he, wants to, he wants to be in private when he prays. Yeah, he wants to be in private and prays. And it's, um, it's also, if he goes away to pray, is he talking to himself? No. I mean, what, what's the difference between praying to Yah and talking to ourself? Yah is a higher being. Talking to ourself is going through our own thoughts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, and, when, and having sent them away, he went to the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea. And he was alone on the land. And seeing them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. At about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea by, and intended to pass them by. Okay, what do we know of the fourth watch? What is that, Nicole? The fourth watch is between 3 and 6 a.m. 3 and 6 a.m. So these guys were out 
literally all night long. They were probably stuck out there because when the wind's blowing against you and you're sitting there rowing like like the Dickens, you're like, and he's about to walk right by there. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean that this is you know these are very interesting accounts to this. Okay, so it's between three to six a.m. is when these guys were out in the middle of the sea. And when they saw him walking on the sea at three in the morning, right, they thought it was a phantom and cried out for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he spoke to them and said to them, take courage. It is I do not be afraid. And he went up to them and then into the boat and the wind ceased and they were exceedingly amazed in themselves and marveled for they did not understand about the lows because their heart was hardened. Okay. What does this mean? Their heart was hardened. Does this mean that Yah has blinded them or are these people are these bad people that their hearts are hardened no they don't understand they're they they are still without understanding they've seen all these things but they don't understand who yahushua is so they're just they're really just don't not accepting him because they're in the jewish religion they're stuck in the jewish things or their messiah is yet to come and they don't understand so their hearts are still hardened and yahushua has to show them this and that's where their hearts become unhardened but they just were shown five some some fish and some bread Ripped up and fed thousands of people. They probably right? think he's just a prophet. And Pharaoh, and Pharaoh had his kid died, and he still went after him. Yeah, that is true. All right, continue on fifty three. And having passed over, they came to the land of Gennesar and drew to shore. What does your guys say for Gennesar? Kenneth, Kenneth, Kenneroth, rather Kenneroth. Yeah, this is it's, this is King is Gener Genes Genesaret. Okay. okay, and when they came out of the boat, he was immediately recognized, and all. That neighborhood ran about and began to carry about on beds those who were sick to wherever they heard he was. It's like a celebrity. He just yeah. can't get away from the people. He's... A absolutely. Definitely a celebrity. And wherever he went into villages or cities or in the country, they, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and begged him to let them touch, if only the zitzi of his garment. And as many as touched him were healed. Okay. Um, wow. So our Messiah is the man, uh, you know, he's the, he's the man. There's a, uh, there's a great reason that we worship our Elohim most high and have absolute respect and love for his son. They've done all this for us. They, they did this. Can you imagine these people thronging around him like this? I mean, he couldn't, he wasn't able to go from one side to the next side to the town and there they thronged him. He became so popular and this is probably what unnerved all of these religious leaders, right? All of a sudden there is a, there's a new game in town and this new game is something way better than all of these doctrines of men that these people have been forced to get under for years and years and years. So this was a, a breath of fresh air. And so this is, this is what all of us can have, right? We can have this breath of fresh air and we're not going to have this fresh air unless we are abiding in the law, statutes of our creator, right? The law, statutes, and commands of our creator are extremely important. And that is how we will find this kingdom. This is where we will be judged. We will be judged by the same book that most people are rejecting. And that is how we'll be judged. And if we're judged by it, we should be living by that. And if we're not, we don't have a lot of time left. We don't have decades and decades of society of the world left. Things are so bad right now. The devils have taken over this entire lands. They've done evil. And so we need to seek our creator right now where he is able to be found. We need to find the hope of our Messiah, Yahushua, and we need to spread this word as much as possible. So thank you guys very, very much. Um, one thing, let me let me do this one thing to you guys. The girl um, wrote in yesterday on my email, and I want to see how you address this. Real quickly, she she asked me a couple questions. Um, one, of the, one of the questions she asked me is, and she's living with her boyfriend, right? She asked me, what is the biblical way of marriage? And I want you guys to tell me what you guys think, and then I will tell you what I told her. The biblical way of marriage, according to the Torah, was that the man would pay the father for the bride price, and he would take her to be his wife. It was an arranged agreement. It was a thing, and he would take her to be the wife, and that was that. And we also see, see with Isaac that there was no arranged, really arranged marriage. There was no, like, found a, no dating. There's none of that. It was just, it happened. So, if you guys didn't want to be under the government or whatnot, and you, there, there's... How would, and you, and you wanted to get married, you, and the, the, how would you do it right the, now? How would you do it in today's society where you wanted to, to, to be a marriage under Yah? How would you get married? 
Uh, you wouldn't. I wouldn't go for uh, the the government. I wouldn't go try to get a marriage certificate because it's not. How biblical. would you marry a woman right now? I would uh, find a, biblically. I would find. What a, would you do? I'd find a man of Yah and go to the parents. And I'd find a man of Yah and say, "I want to get married to your daughter." Find a man of Yah to basically marry us. Okay, that's what you would do. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyone else have anything? Any, any kind of stuff on this? I think if if it was a Torquian family, I just go to the dad and tell him I want to marry his daughter, and if he gave me okay, then we get married. Okay. So this is what I told her. I said. If you wanted to get married under the eyes of Yah, and because she's already, she's already in an adulterous relationship, right? She's already living with her boyfriend. They, they, they are adulterers by trade. I told her all she needs to do is write, I, the husband, whatever his name is, and whatever, to hereby certify this marriage under this date, under this time, and they sign it. And I believe that would be correct under the eyes of Yah. But I also told her that if you do not get what they call legally married, the first fight that they ever have, it's real easy to take this letter of marriage and rip it up. And I, I also explained to her that if they ever have one of those fights and they ever go out with other people, that they can never, ever go back with the people they are with right now because they would be breaking Torah. And so it is, it is kind of sticky because you wouldn't legally be married anywhere. But under the eyes of Yah, if you had two people that were Torah keepers, you don't need a legal marriage. You don't need nothing like that, right? You commit yourself to them. And if you want to write it up like you did back in the day and you, you don't have access to like the bride price and the family and the father and stuff like that, these people are already living together. So um, I didn't know if that was, I, I was curious to know what you guys thought on that. But um, yeah, I will let you guys go. And uh, what do you guys think of my advice? I, that's, a, that's a good advice. I mean, um, it's just like you said, where uh, if there's a problem, there's a fight, they're just going to, it's easy to split up. It's easy, yeah, it's, to, just, it's easy to rip that paper up and say that never meant anything. Absolutely. But under the eyes of Yah, it should be far more important that you do it in the eyes of the government, right? And that's why you, that's and why if you, you are reading your Torah together, praying together, saying you're going to stay as a close family, you're not going to be just something that's easily shaken if you are living under the Torah and living under the life yeah. of Yah. Yeah, and, and being in relationships in, in your youth, it is very easy to get heated very quickly and to end it all. And especially if you're not married, it's very easy just to be done and walk out. So it's, it's kind of a tricky email that she sent. But um, I hope that clarifies that. Much love to everybody out there. We love you guys all. Thank you so much for being part of this family and being part of this table. Have a wonderful day. All right. Shalom. Shalom.